This is Jack Jackson. Today we're going to be looking at co-function identities. The co in co-functions refers to complementary angles. So let's just start by looking at acute angles. And so we see if we have a right triangle, the two acute angles are complementary to each other. So we see that the leg that's adjacent to, uh, say, this acute angle A is actually the leg that's opposite B and vice versa. This leg that's opposite A is the leg that's adjacent to B. Of course, they have the same hypotenuse over here. So we see that from the basic triangle definitions, if T is an acute angle, the sine of angle T is the cosine of pi over 2 minus T, its complementary angle. In other words, the sine of A is the cosine of B. Okay? And then, of course, the other way works around. The cosine of B is the cosine of A. So cosine of T is the sine of pi over 2 minus T. Similarly, the tangent of T is equal to the cotangent of pi over 2 minus T. And the cotangent of T is the tangent of pi over 2 minus T. And the secant of T is cosecant of pi over 2 minus T. And the cosecant of T is secant of pi over 2 minus T. So the, the, the complementary angles, uh, when you put the co in there, you put in a pi over 2, you put in the complementary angle inside, you're going to get the same thing. Or if you take away the co, you can put in the complementary angle inside, and you'll get the same thing. Now this clearly is, is going to work for acute angles. So the question is, does this work for uh, all real number angles once we generalize this to the, say, to the unit circle kind of picture? And uh, the answer is yes, and we're going to see we're going to see that here in just a minute. So we're going to hide this introduction and look at some graphs now. So I'm, I can look at this a couple of different ways. We have graph down here in red, right here, y equals sine of x, and in blue, uh, y equals cosine of x. Now I can move this yellow dot along here, and it's going to give me this blue length, which is clearly the cosine of angle, uh, we'll call that, that x value t. And I've, fit, I've got this worked out so that, the, that this purple point here always has coordinate uh, pi over 2 minus t. Okay? And you can see no matter where I put x or t there, uh, we can find pi over 2 minus t. Okay? And it turns out that if you do the sine of that power 2 minus t, you do get the same height. And if you notice, these are lined up right at the same height. And so they are, those two blue things are congruent. If we look at the picture over here in the, in the unit circle picture, um, I've got this diagram set up so that as I move this yellow dot over here on the, the x-axis down here in the bottom, the corresponding yellow dot moves over here so that it has the same rotational angle. Just sort of watch it. Just watch the yellow dot for a second as we start at zero. As we move this way, it rotates. Now we're up to pi over two, and then to pi, and so forth. And we made it around to two pi, and we can just keep going around around the circle. If we go back the other direction, we're rotating in a negative direction. Then meanwhile, I have it also rotating or corresponding point to the purple point is this purple point over here and that's going to be at an angle of pi over 2 minus t whatever t happens to be at the moment and if you'll notice these reference triangles turn out that they're always congruent and so the cosine of the uh, angle at t turns out to be the sine of the angle at pi over 2 minus t and so the two blue sides are congruent. In fact, the four blue links, the two here in this this uh, drawing up here, along with the two blue links down here in this drawing, all four of those are actually the same length because I've got my scales consistent. Okay, and so those those are the same length. Now, furthermore, look at the unit circle picture. Notice that here in this if uh, the terminal side of the first one is in the first quadrant, so will be the other one. Then we're talking about well, we don't necessarily have to be talking about an acute angle. Here we are, but we could be talking about an angle bigger than 2 pi. But as long as the terminal side lands in the first quadrant, then the purple one's going to be, uh, well, the green angle, purple point, is going to be in the uh, first quadrant as well. And so um, 
we see they have sine and cosine are both positive there. If we look at something that where the angle lands in the second quadrant for angle T, it turns out that pi over 2 minus that is always going to be down here in the fourth quadrant. Okay, you could easily prove that. And so then that shows that when the, so the cosine of the one up here in the second quadrant is negative, and the sine of the one down here in the fourth quadrant is also negative, so that they get the right, um, they're either both positive or both negative there. If we go down here where we get, where, where one is in the uh, third quadrant, it turns out that it's, that the other angle is also in the third quadrant, and both sine and cosine are negative there, so they have the same sign once again. If we get back to something where the angle is in the fourth quadrant for this angle, with the yellow dot, then it turns out that pi over 2 minus that angle turns out to be something that's up in the second quadrant. And at this point, we see that the, uh, both the things are positive. The cosine is positive here on the, the one on the fourth quadrant, and the one in the second quadrant, the sine is positive. So notice, notice no matter where we end up with this point, they either end both in the first quadrant, both positive, one in quadrant one and the other in quadrant four. So they're one's positive and they're either they're both both positive there or uh, both negative there, or they end here, in which case they're both negative. So Either way we go, any way we, we look at it, we can check the ones on the axes as well. Any way we go, we get uh, the sign, positive negative sign, the same. And so you can visually see that. Of course, another way to see this would be to just to graph sine of pi over 2 minus x. And if we do that, it should graph right on top of cosine of x. And that's, that's exactly what does happen here. So there's another visual that guarantees or shows that these two things are, are uh, the same. Now, what I want to do now is actually do a formal proof. Okay, so here are the six co-function identities you see here in blue. And the formal proofs go like this. Start with the first one. Sine of pi over 2 minus t equals cosine of t. That's the one we were, we were actually drawing out and investigating over there in the, in the diagrams. So sine of pi over 2 minus t is sine of negative 1 times parentheses t minus pi over 2. That's a distributive property where we factored out a negative 1. Okay, now sine is odd, so the sine of minus x is the opposite of sine x, so that negative 1 can be essentially pulled out front because sine is an odd function. Then we've got sine of t minus pi over 2. Uh, we can write that as sine of, well, the opposite of, of an angle, well, here's, here's, our, here's our symmetry identity. Sine of pi plus an angle, x, is the opposite of sine of x. That's one of our, our uh, symmetry things that we got from the uh, symmetry of the unit circle. So if I write that is, this is sine of pi plus that angle, then that's the same as the opposite of sine of the angle, the angle being t minus pi over 2. So that is equal to that. Now I'm going to just uh, combine like terms here. Basically, you're really using these commutative and associative properties here to do this. And then pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2. So we end up with sine of t plus pi over 2. But we already have a phase shift identity that says the sine of t plus pi over 2 is cosine of t. Basically, what this does is takes a sine graph and shifts it to the left by pi over 2, which we know gives us a cosine graph. And so that's our phase shift identity. And so ultimately we prove that for all angles t. All right, for cosine of pi over 2 minus t, that's also equal to sine of t. And here's a proof. Cosine of pi over 2 minus t is cosine of negative 1 times t minus pi over 2. Again, we're going to factor out a negative 1 using the distributive property. But cosine is an even function, so this negative can just cancel out. That gives us cosine of t minus pi over 2. And that is also our uh, phase shift identity there, that uh, slightly different phase shift identity. This says we're shifting the cosine to the right by pi over 2, which, of course, gives us a sine wave. So that's another phase shift identity that proves, that, that uh, gives us.
this is what we need there. Okay, and so now we've proved identities 1 and 2. For tangent of power 2 minus t, we, we use a quotient identity. Sort of when you're in doubt, you can change things to sines and cosines. Since we've already proved some things about sine and cosine, uh, we're going to use our quotient identity to write this as sine of power 2 minus t over cosine of power 2 minus t. Then we're going to apply identities 1 and 2 that we just proved and see that the numerator is cosine of t and the denominator is sine of t, but that is just cosine of t over sine of t, which is just cotangent of t. And so that quotient identity finishes us up there. To do it for secant and cosecant, the secant of power over 2 minus t, we use our reciprocal identity. That's 1 over cosine of power over 2 minus t. We use our cofunction identity 2 that we just proved to write the denominator as sine of t, and 1 over sine of t is cosecant t. And I'll leave the proofs to you for 5 and 6. Proof of 5 works a lot like the proof of 3, and the proof of 6 works very much like the proof of 4. And so we see now that we, once you've done those other two proofs on your own, you'll see that we have proved all six of these uh, co-function identities, and that um, gives us some, some interesting things. And it also shows you why these are called co-functions, because that relates to complementary angles.